Hello, this is Eric Bolt from the National Weather Service in Oxnard, California. Here is a quick look at the El Nino Southern Oscillation status and predictions for the upcoming 2014 and 15 winter season for Southwest California. Here is the latest ENSO information. We're currently in an El Nino watch. The ocean is reflecting El Nino conditions, but we're still waiting for the atmosphere to respond. It's likely that El Nino will develop by this fall, but the strength of El Nino remains very uncertain at this time. The typical El Nino pattern looks like this. When the warmer ocean water shifts eastward across the subtropical Pacific Ocean, the jet stream taps into moist storm systems enhanced by the warm waters, and these systems then track across the southern sections of the country. More northern latitudes are typically warmer and drier than normal during the El Nino pattern. Let's take a look at how this year compares to the very strong 97 and 1998 El Nino event. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory satellite called JASON measures sea level height anomalies, which corresponds to sea surface temperatures. The blue colors show lower heights and the red and white colors show higher heights. If you compare the developing El Nino from March of 1997, one of the strongest El Nino winters on the left, with conditions from this past March on the right, you see more red and white colors or higher sea level conditions this year across the equatorial Pacific Ocean. But if you continue to compare the 1997 El Nino on the left with the current developing El Nino this year on the right, you can easily see how much stronger or warmer the 1997 El Nino was by the end of June. The latest image on the right shows much less warming across the, the equator region compared to 1997. Much of the excitement about this year's developing El Nino actually started late last winter. This chart shows the upper ocean heat content along the equator from the surface of the ocean to a depth of 300 meters. Starting in mid-January of 2014, the warm ocean water from the western Pacific shifted east of the dateline, rapidly increasing and then peaking in late March. Since that time, the temperatures have quickly returned back to near normal on the right side of the chart. Another way of comparing the latest developing El Nino with the strong 1997 and 98 event is to look at the upper ocean heat content numbers back then. There was a much stronger surge of warm ocean water that crossed east of the date line back in 1997 compared to this year, which looks much like other weaker years. Sea surface temperatures are monitored weekly, and the latest change over the last four weeks, ending on July 9th, showed weak cool anomalies across the majority of the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. This is another sign that the latest El Nino is currently in a decreasing pattern. A consensus prediction between scientists at the Climate Prediction Center and the International Research Institute at Columbia University suggests that there is an 80% probability of an El Nino this coming fall and winter. The latest El Nino model forecasts project many different outcomes as seen by the spaghetti effect on the chart. The current reading is just below 0.5 degrees on the left, and the range of outcomes keeps the El Nino mainly in a weak to moderate category through next winter. Historically, in southwest California, we have seen an increase in above normal rainfall during El Nino winters compared with La Nina and Enso neutral winters. The probability of above normal rainfall during weak and moderate El Nino events ranges from 41% in Santa Maria, in the middle pie chart, to 53% in Los Angeles on the left. This is based on a total of 17 weak to moderate El Ninos since 1950. The important fact to remember is that the odds of a drier than normal winter are just as high as a wetter than normal winter during weak to moderate events. Here is the latest CPC temperature predictions for the January through March 2015 time frame. There is no significant signal of either above or below normal temperatures for southwest California. The precipitation prediction for the January through March 2015 time frame does show southwest California with an above normal precipitation potential this upcoming winter season. This forecast is based on classic El Nino trends of wetter storms across the southern tier of the country. Here are some conclusions. 
El Nino this winter is likely, but the strength is uncertain. Chance of above normal rainfall increases compared to other years during an El Nino. El Nino does not mean greater storm intensity. Weak to moderate events have sometimes been wet and other times dry. It's about 50-50. Flooding is typically caused by back-to-back -back strong storms in any year, whether that's La Nina, El Nino, or neutral years. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any comments or questions, please contact me. And remember to visit our website for the latest forecast, watches, or warnings.